If anybody should be able to understand evolution, it is me. Because I make molecules for a living. And I don't just buy a kit and mix this and mix this and get that. I mean, ab initio, I make molecules. I understand how hard it is to make molecules. I understand that if I take nature's toolkit, it can be much easier. Because all the tools are already there, and I just mix it in the proportions that, and I do it, do it under these conditions. And it, but ab initio is very, very hard. I don't understand evolution. And I will confess that to you. Is it okay for me to say that I don't understand this? Is that all right? I know that there's a lot of people out there that don't understand anything about organic synthesis, but they understand evolution. I understand a lot about making molecules. I don't understand evolution. And you would say that, wow, I must be really unusual. Let me tell you what goes on in the back rooms of science. With National Academy members, with Nobel Prize winners, I have sat with them. And when I get them alone, not in public, because it's, it's a scary thing if you, t if you say what I just said. And I say, do you understand all of this, where all of this came from and how this happens? Every time that I have sat with people they, who are synthetic chemists, who understand this, they go, uh-uh. Nope. These people are just so far off on how they believe this stuff came together. I have sat with National Academy members and Nobel Prize winners. Sometimes I will say, do you understand this? And if they're afraid to say yes, they say nothing. They just stare at me because they can't sincerely do it. I was once brought in by the, the dean of the department once and many years ago, and he was a chemist, and he was kind of concerned about some things. I said, let me, let me ask you something. You're a chemist. Do you understand this? How do you get... How do you get DNA without a cell membrane? And how do you get a cell membrane without a DNA? And, and how does all this come together from this? He said, Jim, we have no idea. We have no idea. I said, isn't it interesting that you, the dean of science, and I, the chemistry professor, can talk about this quietly in your office? But we can't go out there and talk about this. If you understand evolution, I am fine with that. I'm not going to try to change you, not at all. In fact, I wish I had the understanding that you have. But about seven or eight years ago, I posted on my website that I don't understand. And I said, I will buy lunch for anyone that will sit with me and explain to me evolution. And I won't argue with you until I don't understand something. I will ask you to clarify. But you can't wave by and say, this enzyme does that. You got to get down in the details of where molecules are built for me. Nobody has come forth. The Atheist Society contacted me. The Atheist, <laughs> the Atheist Society contacted me. They said that they will buy the lunch. And they challenged the Atheist Society, go down to Houston, have lunch with this guy, and talk to him. Nobody's come. <laughs> now remember, because I'm just going to ask, when I stop understanding what you're talking about, I will ask. So I'm, I sincerely want to know. I would like to believe it, but I just can't. Now, I understand microevolution. I really do. We do this all the time in the lab. I understand this. But when you have speciation changes, when you have organs changing, when you have to have concerted lines of evolution all happening in the same place in time, not just one line, concerted lines all in the same place, all in the same environment, this is very hard to fathom. Abiogenesis is the prebiotic process wherein life, such as a cell, arises from non-living, simple organic compounds. On our planet, this is what it is. In our universe, this is what it is. As far as we can tell, we're the only ones here so far. But certainly on our planet, it's carbohydrates, nucleic acids, lipids, and proteins. Proteins are polymers of amino acids. Carbohydrates are, are sugars. So, <clears throat> so it's just these four, these four classes of compounds, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, lipids, and proteins make up the substance as li of life as we know it. All of this is needed long before evolution can ever begin. This is predates evolution. This is long before evolution. This, you have to have the first seeded life. You have to have the first cell before you can start talking about evolutionary processes. This predates all of that. 
collective cluelessness. We have no idea how the molecules that compose living systems could have been devised such that they would work in concert to fulfill biology's functions. We have no idea how the basic set of molecules, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, lipids, and proteins were made and how they could have coupled into the proper sequences and then transformed into the ordered assemblies until, they, the, until there was the construction of a complex biological system, like a cell, and eventually to that first cell. Nobody has any idea on how this was done when using our commonly understood mechanisms of chemical science. Those that say that they understand are generally wholly uninformed regarding chemical synthesis. Those that say, oh, this is well worked out, they know nothing, nothing about chemical synth synthesis. Nothing. Further cluelessness, from a synthetic chemical perspective, neither I nor any of my colleagues can fathom a prebiotic molecular route to construction of a complex system. We cannot figure out the prebiotic routes to the basic building blocks of life, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, lipids, and proteins. Chemists are collectively bewildered. Hence, I say that no chemist understands prebiotic synthesis of the requisite building blocks, let alone their assembly into a complex system. That's how clueless we are. I have asked all of my colleagues, National Academy members, uh, uh, um, Nobel Prize winners. I sit with them in offices. Nobody understands this. So if your professors say it's all worked out, your teachers say it's all worked out, they don't know what they're talking about. It is not worked out. You cannot just refer this to somebody else. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> so here's a summary. Those that think that scientists understand the details of life's origin are wholly uninformed. Nobody understands. Maybe one day we will. But that day is far from today. So to make ad hominem attacks upon those who are skeptical of the science to date can be inhibitory to the progress of science. Would it not be helpful to express to students the massive gaps in our understanding so that they, as the next generation of academic soldiers, could seek to propel the field upon a firmer and possibly a radically different scientific basis, rather than upon increasingly ambitious extrapolations that are entirely acceptable and unacceptable in the practice of chemistry. The basis upon which we as scientists are relying is so shaky that it would be best to openly state the situation for what it is, a mystery. That might catalyze some fresh scientific thought on abiogenesis. I was just saw a presentation by a Nobel Prize winner modeling the action of enzymes. And I walked up to him afterward. I said, I'm writing an article of, entitled Abiogenesis Nightmare. Where do these enzymes come from? He says, these things are synthesized biologically. I said, no, no, starting from the beginning, where do these th things come from? He says, what did you write in your article? I said, I said, it's a mystery. He said, that's exactly what it is. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Why do so few chemists speak up regarding difficulties with origin of life? Few think about it intently. They're just too busy with other things. I mean, we got one, one synthetic chemist here, the guy's trying to get tenure. I mean, he's got a lot of things to think about. He doesn't think about abiogenesis. How often do you wake up in the morning thinking about abiogenesis? Not very often. Yeah. He got a lot of other things to do. He got a lot of emails to answer. <laughs> they think that someone else understands. That's what they think. They think someone else understands. It's just like you. You think someone else understands. I'm telling you, nobody understands it. It's viewed as the only ball game in town. Okay, we don't have another thing. You shouldn't shoot it down, tour. You shouldn't shoot it down until you have an alternative proposal. Oh, really? Is that what we teach our students? Do we teach our students that you can't contest with that mechanism until you have a better one? No, if the mechanism doesn't explain the facts, you discard that mechanism or you change it to fit the facts. That's your proposed mechanism. You don't say, until you have something better. No, you just shoot the thing down. And also for fear of being ostracized and fear of reprisals. Some think it's even justified to go after people who won't buy into this. They think it's even justified. They deserve to be disenfranchised. It's a sad state of affairs. When will the scientific community confess to the world that they are clueless on life's origin, that the emperor has no clothes? If you dare question the mainstream scientific establishment as I am doing today, you will be held out of certain societies. How do I know? Because I was told I wouldn't get into certain societies. 
because of my views on these things. I was told this to my face behind closed doors. And I said, then I will speak up. Then I will speak up. Body plans. A body plan is the ground or plan under the assemblage of morphological features shared among common members of a phylum level group. The term is usually applied to animals and it's the blueprint encompassing aspects such as symmetry, segmentation, limb, de de uh, 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 limb deposition. Body plans. There is no mechanism for how Different species got their body plans. No mechanism. By that I mean, remember what I told you, what, what the evolutionists themselves said. Biology, but that evolution consists of two things. Mechanisms and universal common descent. There is nobody can fathom the mechanisms for the change of a body plan in going from one species to another. Nobody has a mechanism. Mechanism means the process by which that would occur. You measure... You measure things that tell you mechanisms. Any massive functional change of a body part would require multiple concerted lines of variation. Sure, one can suggest multiple small changes to ad infinitum, but a concerted requirement of multiple changes all happening in the same place at the same time in evolutionary history is impossible to chemically fathom. One day the requisite chemical basis might become apparent so that the question can be answered. But present day biology is far from providing even a chemical proposal for the functional change, let alone a data substantiated chemical mechanism. So I, asked, I would ask them, tell me the chemical me you know, Biology is not like organic chemistry where you can push every electron. Okay, fine. Tell me just in your mind how something like this could proceed. Nothing. They don't even have a proposal for the change. So, therefore, I don't understand the mechanisms needed to change body plans or the mechanisms along the descent pathway from Australia, uh, Australopithecine brain to a modern human brain if we were indeed commonly descended as predicted by the theory of universal common descent. I don't understand it. And nobody else understands the mechanisms either. Nobody. Nobody. They don't understand. And what the difference is, when I speak to them, I ask them, show me the mechanism. And they can't wiggle out. They're stuck. When you ask them, they will say, this is clearly understood. I will send you some papers. <laughs> this is what they will say to you. Because they used to say this to me. And I say, no, no. I want you to explain it to me. Because I've gotten their papers, and it's a bunch of fish heads. And I see nothing. I see no mechanism there. Nobody understands this. Nobody understands.